Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circular Metabolism podcast. I'm your host, Aristide, from Metabolism of Cities. And in this podcast, we interview thinkers, researchers, policymakers, and practitioners to better understand what uh, makes the metabolism of our cities more sober and more circular. Or in other words, how to reduce their environmental impact in a socially just and context-specific way. In this new episode, I want to move away from studying economic alternatives, technological solutions and policy measures and get back to an essential question, which is how do you plan and design cities in order to make them more environmentally friendly? In fact, there is a very intimate relationship between the territorial organization of a city and how that city consumes their resources, uh, but also how they will reuse waste flows within the city or elsewhere. So in other terms, I wanted to discuss uh, with one of the world-renowned architects and urbanist Paola Vigano about what, what does it take to, to plan a city. Paola is the co-founder of the architectural studio, uh, architectural study studio, uh, and professor in urban theory and urban design at the EPFL in Lausanne, but also at the UAV in Venice. Uh, she has received numerous awards for her work, including the French Grand Prix de l'Urbanism in 2013, the gold medal for Italian architecture in 2018. She has received the, the title of Doctoris Honoris Causa at the, uh, at the Université Catholique de Louvain in 2016. So uh, her work has... Um, her studio has worked really in constructing many visions for metropolitan areas. These included the, the areas of Paris, of Brussels, Lille, Montpellier, and many other territories across the globe. Um, so with all that being said, uh, Paula, thank you very much for being part of this podcast. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Aristide. And uh, I wanted perhaps to give you some minutes to introduce yourselves and what, what do you do in, in, your, in your work? <laughs> what I do in my life. <laughs> I, I work in my life. I work. <laughs> Maybe this is, uh, is already a first, uh, first problem. So I'm, I'm an architect. I've been um, educated as, a, as an architect. Uh, but then immediately um, after school, I, I started to work with uh, Bernardo Secchi that uh, was already uh, at the time, uh, let's say, an important uh, urbanist and also a very, a very important uh, professor. So at the same time, I started to work professionally, but also uh, deciding very soon uh, to go for a PhD. And then I got a PhD in, uh, at the U of in Venice uh, on, uh, uh, in architecture, in fact, uh, and let's say arch where architecture is, uh, and is and was and is always imagined as a transcalar, let's say, uh, discipline or the, where the city is also part of uh, what you can call architecture. Eventually, you can say architecture of the city. So, um, and at the same time, while uh, say making my, my research, I was uh, experimenting and experiencing. And this is maybe what uh, characterizes uh, my work that is always uh, uh, in between uh, concrete conditions, concrete um, also relations with the uh, people and with uh, politicians, with uh, institutions, but also citizens uh, about uh, cities and in general about their future and not really about their past. <laughs> and, uh, and also uh, research. So research where uh, design, so the idea of the project of uh, the transformation that in any case is uh, uh, in, fast, in, in front of us because uh, uh, whatever is our position, let's say, about uh, the future, in any case, we will not be the same. So in any case, that will be a transformation that will uh, be uh, ongoing. And of course, I'm interested in the transformation that are touching and starting from space. So spatial transformations. Uh, so at the same time, um, research, research by design and, uh, and working in concrete uh, context. And, and I think that this is a very... How can you say a very fertile mix, very fertile mix, and I think that uh, sometimes academia uh, forgets about uh, the the necessity of this mix. So I'm also very in favor of, of of a connection between academia and society, and and of this kind of hybrid uh, field where you you can um, 
working in an open way with, uh, with all the, the components of, of society, let's say. And I can imagine, of course, in your field, this is ever so present because you cannot be teaching architecture without knowing what it is to, to deal with. Well, the <laughs> well or you no, can, but... Uh... <laughs> no, no, you're not, uh, you're not right. Uh, <laughs> on the contrary, on the contrary, um, I, I can say that in, uh, in the last, uh, let's say, decades, for many different reasons that we are not going out to, uh, to explore, uh, the tendency has been to divide, to separate even more the professional work from the academic work. So let's say academic work is where you can, uh, you know how to, to write uh, a, a research proposal, where you can uh, publish, et cetera, but where you don't touch, in fact, the ground. And, and this I think is, uh, it, 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 it's, it can be a big problem for, uh, for academia. And, and I think that is good to introduce this hybridity. Uh, also because uh, from uh, the perspective of a designer, I mean, <laughs> in fact, a designer really uh, needs to touch the ground because uh, uh, the constraints of, of the ground are something that is really helpful. It's not a, a limitation. It's not that if you have uh, just a blank uh, paper <laughs> or a blank sheet, then everything is easier. It's, uh, it's to the contrary. So in that sense, I think that is fundamental to be into uh, the, uh, the things. And, and I, I think that the, the present time with the, the enormous challenges we, we have are really asking for this uh, hybridity. On one side, we need, of course, uh, say hard research, scientific research to, to nourish and to be integrated as much as possible with the, the spatial perspective, with the transformation, with design, the design transformation. But on the other side, we need we need really to experience and, and to and to have occasions to um, to explore to explore directly uh, and to measure also the distance between uh, what we think and what the collective imagery think because uh, the, the, the two can be very disconnected and uh, and to uh, to work on collective imagery is, is is fundamental I think to understand the change that is ongoing because in fact. Images and imageries and collective imageries are very rapidly evolving in this moment. Also, of course, uh, almost one year and a half of uh, COVID is, is helping, but uh, there is clearly a, a, a big cultural, let's say, change. And, uh, and I think that we, we have to be there. We, we need to, to participate and to connect and to discuss and to open up our, our, our thinking, let's say, to, to, to the rest of, of society. So you mentioned something quite interesting, which you said, of course, that the limitations are perhaps structuring uh, the way that you work or that uh, architects or urbanists uh, could or should work. Uh, and I'm thinking, um, so wh when you have to tackle or when you have to work to do, you know, a master map or a, a master plan or thinking about a, a city and when you have an assignment for one city or a metropolis, uh, I can imagine that there are so many limitations to think of at the same time. Uh, there is so many challenges uh, th that they either write in the brief or that you experience yourself by going to the city or something like that. So how do you uh, not get overwhelmed by <laughs> this myriad of challenges and you say, okay, let me just pause it there and start by working. H how do you yeah, negotiate or, or work with that? Maybe uh, first, uh, uh, let's remain a moment on uh, on the idea of limitation. I think it's uh, it's 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 a very good uh, point to uh, to reflect on the on the current uh, condition. So we we understand that uh, the the city of the future will, will be a city that has to limit um, its consumption, has to limit the consumption of, of of soil, of the ground, the consumption of energy, the consumption of of resources. We understand that um, the um, architecture of the city will be fundamentally rethinking, reimagining, restructuring, reusing, redesigning what is already already there. So one can can say, okay, then the limits are really too much. So where where can we put our our imagination? How can we imagine then something different? Now it's a, one of the traditional uh, questions that I I'm I'm asked <laughs> to answer is. 
how will be the city of the future? <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm always very deceiving because I think that the city of the future will not be fundamentally, I mean, it's not, it, it will not be another city, but it's the city of today. So one can imagine that there is a problem of excessive limitation of our extraordinary imagination. On the contrary, uh, as I was saying before, uh, limits and, and limitations are simply helping us. They are simply um, giving us some resistance on which you can bring your, or you can uh, express your, your uh, imagination. And uh, to make this even more clear, I, I take uh, an example that is um, uh, a fantastic uh, um, books uh, by Marcel Proust, La Recherche du Temps Perdu, um, that, that has been defined by some literary scholar uh, as, um, as being um, literature at the second degree, literature au deuxième degré. Um, because, in fact, you find inside uh, uh, La Recherche everything, everything that was already been said or, or written, published, uh, is like a sum of uh, different types of literature, probably high literature, very popular literature, common uh, terms, uh, way of, of, of using words, uh, characterizing a certain epoch, etc. So it's, and this is, uh, is in a way reusing um, elements uh, of, 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 of literature that were already there. And, and then you can say that this is a masterpiece. So it's a masterpiece. This is a totally new thing that has a completely um, a revolution, let's say, in, in, in the art of, of writing and of imagining the, the narrative uh, uh, trajectory and is made with existing things. So for me, the city of the future is very close to the Recherche du Temps Perdu. So it will be new. It will be different, but it will be uh, really reinterpreting. So the, 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 the themes of uh, stratification, of uh, palimpsest, of uh, mm -hmm. also reduction of consumption. So really understanding that, that there is um, matters, materials that you can, uh, you can uh, work with, that uh, you can rethink uh, the old typologies, that you can uh, make, give uh, buildings, uh, infrastructural, uh, works uh, several life and not just one life. I mean, th this is for me, uh, I have a sentiment of freedom, of great uh, of, of, uh, extension for, of the possibility for our imagination, although it will be reflecting, reusing, re uh, readjusting what is already there. So I, I, to make it maybe even more clear, I feel as if we were, I don't know, uh, in the 20s of the last century when uh, the uh, architects and urbanists of the modern movement of um, what was called the rational architecture or uh, the functional city, they, they were writing a manifesto you know, about what should have been the city of the future. And they were interpreting that period, lots of the civilization, based on uh, industry, machine, exploitation of resources, etc. For them, you had to start from scratch. Without that, you could not design the city of the future. Now we are, let's say, at the opposite. <laughs> I feel the same, uh, the same uh, sentiment of, of uh, openness as if we, we have uh, really a, a full uh, ocean in front of us, that is this future, where we can imagine to, to, to design differently from the past. And uh, this enormous difference from the way in which we were working in the past and the way we, which we will work and design in the future will make a different city. Although we will simply reuse what is already there. So this uh, change of, uh, of uh, gaze, uh, giving priorities to things that in the past had no priority at all, revealing things that in the past were completely hidden. And now you, you can show them again, you can uh, regenerate them, you can reveal them again. For me, this is a, a new discovery, a new discovery of the world. 
And in that sense, I think that uh, we are in a very special moment. It's, it's a moment that it is unique. It's like the one of one century ago, more or less. Uh, although well, the EU calls it about the new Bauhaus, let's see if that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new Bauhaus is, is in fact interpreting, I think, a little bit uh, this uh, this, this idea. Uh, but I, I would I would not have used the term Bauhaus. I have to say uh, I don't know why, but nevertheless, I think that these are really uh, stories of the past. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. These are stories of the past, and maybe we should have uh, used a, a different name. The spirit, I, I agree, and I share this idea that we are in the same moment of uh, foundation, of refoundation, on different uh, bases, on different uh, values. And uh, the, the problem, or the interesting part, is that the values are not yet completely revised. Now they are under revision. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, you are this, you're not uh, like a, one century ago when in fact the value system was already there because of the evolution happened before 50 years before at least 50 years even more uh, no even more let's say more than that but uh, uh, it depends on the different countries because in europe uh, the industrial revolution was not always in the same moment in the same country no but uh, uh, in any case there was already a certain distance and there was already an accumulation of uh, criticism against the initial uh, uh, city for example the industrial city at the beginning of the industrial revolution was a, a drama was a catastrophic hygiene problem hygiene uh, high, uh, yes uh, healthy problems etc um so there was a long period of reflection on that. And at the end of that period, uh, architecture and urbanism started with uh, this uh, new type of city. That is uh, the city that has been used to, the theories that have been used to construct our peripheries, our, let's say, large part of our, of our cities. They were the result of a long period of uh, criticism against the initial industrial city. So now our criticism, so, so the, the time to elaborate the new positions, new, new, uh, new um, uh, values, uh, maybe start to be quite long because if we start from, uh, let's say the, the limits of uh, to growth, eh, uh, so then, then in fact, we start to have 50 years of criticism. The problem is that uh, after some decade, no, not even decade, some years of criticism in relation with the, with the oil uh, crisis, uh, et cetera, then we forgot everything. We forgot everything and we, we start in the 80s, in the 90s, as if nothing had happened. So mm. this period was interrupted, drastically interrupted. Of course, uh, some people, some scientists continue to work on those things, but say the public opinion forgot practically about those things. And then now since like we can say, I don't know, 20, 25 years, they are back together with the climate change, with, with all the new challenges. And so it's not exactly the same position. I think that our uh, old um, uh, colleagues, they, they were a little more settled, more clearly settled. They, they knew mm. what they had to do. Uh, the industrial machine was clear it seemed to be something destined to, to last for centuries. In fact, it lasted for some decades in, in many cases. But they thought they were solid. No? Their ground was solid. I think our ground is not as solid and maybe it's better because uh, they, had, they were too, too much uh, sure of themselves. And they, they, and they made a lot of mistakes because, uh, because of that. I mean, they, they, it, it, enough, it is enough to read uh, some text of Le Corbusier to understand how much Le Corbusier was sure of what uh, he was saying as a kind of truth. We are not. And I think this is very good. So I prefer to have a less solid soil on which we can, uh, we can work. And uh, of course, there is this problem of uh, value change, but is, is a problem that... Uh, Say you can uh, you can revise. You are not immediately into the uh, construction of a new dogmatic plan. No, we, we are on the contrary in try to, to to understand. And I think this is this is, is very uh, healthy. Let's say in the in uh, in uh, being being in the in the situation to decide for the future uh, of cities and territories. But I think you're right. I mean, you, you very well put it to. I mean, put it forward that 
you know, we had some challenges in the past, like in the early industrial area, there was this, let's say, Hosmanization of Europe, where they kind of cleaned neighborhoods and destroyed neighborhoods to, to make uh, boulevards and infrastructure and all of that. And then we had another period, let's say early 20th century or mid 20th century, which was, uh, or just after the Second World War, where we, you know, just had the yeah. uh, massification of, of buildings and all of that. And today there is something different. But in all of these periods, there, there was always a societal challenge, uh, um, an economic justice challenge. Uh, there was an environmental challenge uh, in, in one way or another. And so these are always there. It's not as if, uh, you know, it, it's a new word and it's the first time that we have to juggle with these problems. No, absolutely. But now there, I mean, now you, it's almost you don't have more space to move. They're all touching each other. Before, yeah. I mean, you could always go from one to the other. Let's say you, you can more or less uh, increase social welfare back in the day, but you destroyed the environment or I don't know, the economy. I'm making this up. But uh, today, everything is so interlinked, not only here, but at a global scale that, yeah. well, there's no more space to move. You have to address the challenge. Uh, whereas in the past, you, you could, Absolutely. yeah. Yes. I would say the challenges are different also. Mm. At least we perceive them as very different. Um, th there are some continuities. That, that would be interesting eventually to, to, to go deeper because, uh, for example, if you take uh, one element important in the city of today, and it will be even more uh, relevant in the city of the future, is uh, the, presence, the presence of... Uh, green and open space, for example. No? Mm. This is not a new theme at all. Mm -hmm. This is a, a traditional theme because in fact, uh, the city, uh, the modern city was exactly the city where uh, the idea of air, of sun, of, uh, of uh, more healthy condition uh, immediately brought into the city parks, uh, um, the big boulevard, but um, even at a smaller scale, now this idea that uh, the, 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 the access to the open land had to be guaranteed. Um, sometimes we, we forget this, this because maybe we think that we have to densify, that it's very important to, 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 to make the city as uh, um, compact and dense and, as possible, but then we, we are forgetting that in fact that those open spaces are absolutely crucial. And today, on the basis also of, of the more recent research on the, the, on the urban soil, on the urban uh, biodiversity, uh, we know how important it is to have these uh, empty spots that are not empty at all, but they can uh, uh, contribute with their presence to a well being that is not only our well being, but is also the well being of, of the system uh, in, its, uh, in its entirety. So we have to be very, very attentive uh, to, to, the, to the loss of, uh, of these uh, spaces which are always under, under threat, in fact. Uh, and, and this is not a, a new theme, but it's, it's a very traditional one. And the city, the modern city has to be reframed and, and uh, re-read, uh, maybe selecting some of the, of the interesting aspects that nevertheless are still, uh, are still present and to maybe uh, update them or to reframe them in, uh, in, uh, in our moment, while there are other aspects that are for sure uh, to be abandoned, that we are not interested to bring them into, into our... But uh, for example, if I take the question of uh, the regeneration of nature in the city, um, there are very important projects uh, of the 30s, so almost one century ago. Uh, in, uh, in Sweden, for example, there was this uh, school of uh, landscape uh, uh, architecture in in, uh, in Stockholm in the 30s that was clearly working on this regeneration of nature. So where nature inside the city uh, was not present before, but was reintroduced or reinvented. So I think that this question of uh, working with the uh, with life. Eh? Um, I know that we have, I have to be very, very prudent in using these terms because uh, um, we are so used to the abuse eh, of working with life. But uh, nevertheless, uh, when you make uh, a public space, when, we, when you design a, a park, uh, you are working with life in, in, in any case, no? because you are 
uh, let's say, establishing new dynamics. You are working with existing soil. You, you have to select some soils. You have to evacuate eventually because uh, there is the pollution. You have to uh, regenerate that soil. And then this is uh, starting a, a new life, maybe a dead soil that uh, become in a living soil. These aspects are not only aspects for pedologists, these are aspects for, for designers. And, and I think that uh, it's, uh, it, it also show, shows how by uh, reworking on, on, uh, on what is there, in fact, uh, the, the margin is, is, very, is very high, it's very large. There is so much you can do simply reworking on what is, what is there. For example, from a dead soil, you can pass to a, a living soil. Which is which is a revolution, right? In a, in a way. And so, do, do you have like a, a small voices that tell you, look, uh, there is a soci so social challenge that you need to take into account. There is an environmental one that you need to take into account. And then, on the other side, you have someone else that says, "Well, will that create jobs? And what about oh. you know where our kids are going to go to school?" And so. Do they all have one vote or how does it work? You know, how do you... Uh... Well, I think that you have to imagine yourself, I mean, the designer um, of uh, cities, territories, landscape, uh, as to, is always, uh, is never alone, of course. Uh, first of all, we have to abandon the idea that we are creating, we are simply, we are simply, um, simply, I don't know, in the way, uh, guiding a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and this conversation is... Uh, Is, uh, is, is very rich, sometimes it's, it's conflictual, <laughs> and, and you have to guide also and through the conflict, and that's part of the story. In some, in some cases, you have also simply to, to retreat, to abandon, because maybe you don't share anymore certain directions. So, I mean, everything is possible. But in, I imagine this as a, a table. No? So we are around the table. Uh, around this table, I, I see, of course, uh, the politicians, so there is politics around the table. There are citizens, there are um, the stakeholders, so there are also the big actors, and there are also other, uh, other things, or let's uh, avoid the, the term things. So uh, there is the soil, there is the water, uh, there are certain landscapes. And I think my table, at least the table where I sit, is made like that. And even if uh, certain um, individuals are not really present, I think that there is a kind of responsibility of, uh, of us to represent also those that are not around the table. Because around the table, there is never everybody. Mm -hmm. Someone is always, is always out, out of the table. And they can be human <laughs> or can be not humans. But in any case, the table is never complete. And I think that you have to make an effort as a designer to bring at the table, let's say uh, implicitly or explicitly, uh, the different individuals that we know because we look at, uh, at things, we look at uh, uh, landscapes, we look at um, housing, we look at infrastructures. We know that they are inhabited. So we know who are the inhabitants. And, uh, and I think it's, it's our responsibility to bring this uh, Uh, subjects around the table. And maybe this is a, a moment to introduce um, what I think is, is, is a fundamental shift uh, in, in our perception of, uh, of the world where we live. Is, uh, for me, at least, it has been very important that the, the shift in uh, looking at the territory as an object or try make, making the effort to look at the territory as a subject. When the territory becomes a subject, or let's say is uh, made of subjects, then things change radically, immediately. Then every single, let's say, square centimeters of, of ground, of city, is something, is a subject. And, uh, and I, th I think that this, of course, is uh, not, uh, not simply... Um, Uh, I don't know, a change of perspective, but it's, it's really a kind of ethical change. Mm. Uh, I can say the things differently. The, the modern city was based on a different ethic. And the city of the future, if it will be the city of the future, the city of the transition, the city that will uh, try to give a solution to the, 
the problems uh, we now perceive and, and we have, it will, uh, it will have a different ethic. So, of course, then we, we are designers, we are not uh, philosophers, and, uh, but we simply know that there is a relation between ethic and design, between uh, the, the, the shape you give things and the reason why you give and the, the conviction that are guiding towards that, uh, that shape. And uh, this is an evolution I can measure in my own life. So, I mean, it's something that is not uh, so, so, so ancient, uh, or maybe it is ancient because I'm not so, so young. But let's say I perceive nevertheless, nevertheless certain passages. Uh, for example, I give you an example. I, we, we designed a, a park in Antwerp, Spor North Park. Uh, this park was a great success. Uh, I mean, socially, was uh, uh, absolutely uh, very much used and appreciated. Uh, this park uh, was in a part of the city that is uh, that was the poorest part of the city. Uh, it was realized thanks to also funds from the region, the Flemish region, but also from the from Europe. So that there was a kind of uh, there was an ambition to to, to bring uh, a, an equipment, uh, an infrastructure, a social infrastructure for for the neighborhoods that are around, social housing, uh, railway lines. I mean, the, it was really not the best part of the uh, of the city. Um, there was uh, a conflict between uh, the the other individuals, for example, biodiversity. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know, to give more space to, to certain dynamics, uh, because, because the, 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 the social aspect clearly got the priority. And today, after um, almost say, 13, 14 years that the park has been realized, each time I see this park, I tell myself, okay, but here, in fact, the priority was the, the social priority. Um, I still feel a little bit of problem because in fact, I see that the other are not so well represented in, in this space. And, um, but I, I hope that nevertheless, you can always put your hands on this park and while maintaining, because nevertheless, it is a centrality in the city. It has given this uh, quite marginal neighborhood uh, a, a true centrality. Then also many other operations were developed around the, the park. Uh, but, but maybe today one can try to make a coexistence between uh, this social, very strong social aspect, uh, the densest part of the city where there was a, a lack of green spaces and then the need of, of uh, a, such a, a big uh, a big park. Um, but on the other side, I think that maybe we should be more attentive today, if we were designing this park today, to the, this coexistence also with the, with the others that are also important. Um, that's just a small en element which uh, measure a little bit the, the shift, I think, that um, um, this shift is, uh, is really um, complicated because uh, it's not that we have solved the social yeah. <laughs> challenges. Of course. Not that in this time, because we have, nevertheless, uh, we had a clear set of priorities. No? So the social, the, the redistribution of uh, fac facilities, of wealth, uh, etc. No, because the problem is that in the last uh, 40, 50 years, we, we re really back, uh, how do we say? Yeah, yeah, it went worse. <laughs> it's it's not, yeah. <laughs> we, we went in, in, in the wrong direction. Yeah. So we went in the wrong direction. So today we have at the same time, and that's also very, very fundamental for the project of the city. You, uh, that's why we speak of socio-ecological transition. Mm -hmm. So the transition is, is both, uh, uh, to tell the truth, is socio-ecological uh, and economic transition. So you, I think that uh, our projects our design today has to be conf is confronted with the three, <laughs> the three uh, uh, dimensions, and of course uh, this is not so easy because we are simply architects and designers, so <laughs> we cannot solve <laughs> all the problems of the world. Uh, but I think that for sure there is an attention also to um, to, to the mechanism of, of let's say the new type of works. So how space should be adapted to uh, living and working in the same place or uh, 
having different rhythms between uh, working at home and working eventually somewhere else about the future of cities where if uh, the remote uh, working will continue, you will have less city users and the city users have been fundamental for the economy of the centers of, of cities in, in the last decades. And this economy has been even very much emphasized. Uh, I mean, this economy that means a kind of spectacular, spectacular Spectacularization also of the city, where you have city users, city, um, people that are there to consume the city. So the, where the consumption of the city is uh, is, is one uh, gradient of, of the of the urban economy. So now imagine that the people will use uh, uh, the cafe, the the, the, the different uh, services that the city has provided, much less than uh, what was in the past then you have a problem with the center of the city, for example. And you have to imagine how different type of uh, uses for the ground floors, also for the public spaces. And the public space of the city, I see this now during the COVID, where are the people? People are not in the center of the city or very few, a small part is there. People are wherever there is an open space, especially if it is connected with, let's say, territorial open spaces, especially when you, you get out of your house and you enter, for example, a 20 kilometers long path that brings you, people are there, but the mass of people are there. So there is a totally, um, there is a movement very, very, a big a sort almost of uh, abandon of certain areas of the city. So the city space, I think uh, after the COVID and uh, in, in uh, rethinking the way of living, probably will, will, will have to be rethought. On one side, I think we, we will have to connect clearly every single open public space of the city with the outside, with the geography, with the, with the landscapes, with the, something that uh, give you the possibility to, to use a larger space and not to be confined into uh, smaller spaces. People are getting used to, to walk, to, to, to stay outside. I mean, exactly also maybe as, as, a, as a reaction, but I think that these reactions will probably remain because people feel better let's say, simply because they live in a different way. So for example, we should stop the, the idea that the center of the city or uh, practically only based on commerce, so consumption. If it's we want also to... the political element, you know, I mean... Uh, Absolutely. You said, yes. uh, like, the cities, as you said before, the city center was where the commerce was, where, where the guild were exchanging and all of that, or where the democracy was. And then there was, let's say, the social welfare city, and now we're in the neoliberal city, and we... I know where, as you said, our values change, especially yeah. during shocks. And so we want to rediscover what the, the political value of a city should be as well. Uh, Absolutely. And, and the political value of the city cannot uh, uh, remain mainly or practically uh, concentrated on uh, consumption, for example. Mm. The crisis, I mean, the crisis that, that the close all the shops clearly show that you can live say, <laughs> also without shops no yes there are different uh, other logistics are the other forms of shopping but nevertheless there has been a reduction of consumption mm -hmm. in this period and i think that uh, apart from uh, people that really needed certain things of course i'm not talking of that but i'm talking of the great mass that was not really need to have new objects and and, and i think that uh, this has been a clear uh, social experiment very cruel, but at the same time, uh, really very, very clear. And I think that uh, there is also a rediscovery of uh, a, a richness of the environment apart from the practices of consumption, because we were reducing all the environment, all the cities just to a practice of consumption. Yeah, a little bit of culture, but also culture transformed into just a, a commodification of, uh, of culture. So. So in that sense, I think that there is really a lot to rediscover in our cities and to work in our, on the space of our cities in this idea of uh, really make uh, continuities and, and um, go beyond the, the, the actual fragmentation of cities. 
But to react on what you were saying before, uh, I think that uh, it's also very important uh, to state that inside the actual conditions, the actual neoliberal economy, there will, no, there will not be any transition. The ecological, the socio-ecological transition uh, is in need of, uh, of, uh, of a different organization. And, uh, and we, can, uh, we can tell each other that, uh, I mean, we can do everything because we are able to tame everything because the technology will help us. But this is not true. This is not true. And um, I'm not saying that technology is not important. Yeah, this, yeah of course. We... Uh, Aristide is, is, is an old uh, debate we, we have, but I'm not saying that it's not important. I'm saying it's, it's important, it's fundamental, but it's not able to solve everything. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's clear that uh, a technological, a pure technological approach is not enough. We need a uh, ethic and political approach that has to compose with the technological innovation. So this uh, ethic and political approach, I measure this approach in space. I'm not a politician, I'm not a, philo a philosopher, as I was saying. I am only one person speaking and thinking in any moment of her life about space. And for me, space is, uh, is also the, the mirror where I can see uh, certain effects of, uh, of uh, politics, of choices, etc. Uh, so it is there that I think uh, is my, let's say, my, my field where, where I can grasp and I can see, I can read things. And I can also, of course, uh, imagine to design something to, to, to change the direction. So the transition of space, the ecological transition in space, will not be possible without uh, some uh, reflection at, uh, of a larger order. And I think that there are so many people today that are thinking the same. And the question is that, uh, are we enough? <laughs> are we the majority or not? Uh, in any case, uh, uh, my position in this moment, uh, in all the cities in which I, I work, I propose to consider each occasion a kind of laboratory. We need laboratories of the transition. Uh, so all the... It's not important to have the, the most important uh, city in the world. It's not important to have the, the most crucial uh, or the most even contrasted, no? It's not, uh, it, it's every single place can be a place where you can test uh, in space uh, the transition. You start with uh, the mobility, you start with uh, revising uh, the, uh, the way in which you inhabit uh, a building, the way in which you, you can mix things you start with uh, uh, rethinking also the, the logic uh, and the structure of the public space and the open space. And you work also on, on, the, on the different forms that uh, work is now assuming. So where in fact, uh, this work uh, in the past work was uh, related to certain forms. So the, the activity zone, for example, or the, the center or the district, um, uh, the, the commercial district or the uh, tertiary district, the, the, the office uh, district. I think now all this is uh, like melting in the air, like other things were melting in the air in the past. So it's melting in the air and we, we have to reconstruct the uh, relations. So in fact, I think uh, that uh, <clears throat> in this moment, uh, the, the true novelty is uh, that we are reconstructing relations that are different from the relations that were established in the past. In the past, we establish certain distances, no? certain separation, certain buffer, certain way to organize uh, the things. And today we, we revise all that. And this is special. This has to do with space. So this is something we can design. You, I think well, what, uh, what's very interesting is that you said that we need more or less to, to leave the current system or the, the way that we think of a city or the, the political values in order to get to a new system in order to, to make any transition, right? So we, we need probably a, a good idea or a good, something appealing to, to get to, right? Because th that's also what's missing as well, something appealing to say, let's go towards that direction. Today, we're, we're a bit stuck in the mud and it's hard to see what's the next step. Where, where do we are, are gonna leave? And you have developed such, 
concepts yourself, uh, such as the poorest city, the, the horizontal metropolis. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, how they can help to for us to transition to a next state. So I don't know, can you spend a, a moment or two to explain yeah. these metaphors yeah. and then how they can help <laughs> us to, to move to the next state? Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, I want to nuance, uh, I, I was not saying that uh, in order to, to do whatever step, we need to change all the universe. Huh? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that without that, it, it will not be possible mm -hmm. to uh, transform in deep, uh, let's say, our, uh, uh, our planet, which is, uh, which is evident, which is logic. But I, on the contrary, I'm very convinced of the capacity of every single project to transform every single occasion. That's why I'm speaking of the laboratories of, of the transition. And I work more or less at that scale of the laboratories of the transition, not at the scale of the geopolitical uh, questions. You, Aristide, you're working more on the metabolism <laughs> in a planetary way. But I, I, I start, let's say, more from, from uh, the, the specific uh, situation, of course, uh, contextualizing them. So uh, in these uh, situations, um, uh, how, how you, you move? Um, I think that there are two different um, uh, approaches that, <coughs> in fact, for me, are very coherent, one to each other. The first is you need uh, to, to use your, your eyes, uh, your gaze, eyes in a not just uh, physical eyes, but... So it's, it's a question of gaze. So uh, first, we, you, you structure your gaze. And I think that uh, in this moment, we, we need, uh, let's say, in short, a new handbook of the gaze. No? We, we, we need to, to look at things uh, in different way. And, uh, and I, I'm putting a lot of energies in, uh, in understanding what is different in the way in which we describe, for example, the city mm -hmm. uh, from, from the past. And, also, what are the continuities? Because there are things that are still very useful in looking at the cities. Um, on the other side, we need really kind of, uh, we need abstraction. We need to set an abstract condition, a, a, an abstract space or a space of abstraction where you can, uh, in a way, reconceive the, the, the situation. Because otherwise you, you get completely prisoner of, of, of the limits that you were probably talking of at the beginning, that where you, you, you have the impression that everything is so heavy, but the city is heavy. Yeah? <laughs> to change the city is not something you can do in a, no, it's in a light way. Uh, you can make some light things, but to change the city needs time and needs in general also uh, investment infrastructures and and and, uh, and transformations so from the from the the, the need to uh, reorganize your gaze to the need of uh, maintaining a space of abstraction where you can reconceive situations uh, i think that the two really work very well uh, together so in this space of abstraction for example we have put certain concepts these concepts uh, we we have uh, worked uh, out uh, together with Bernardo Secchi, uh, especially the Poros uh, city uh, and the isotropic territories, or let's say first the isotropic territories and then the Poros city. The horizontal metropolis of, was coming out of the, our common discussion because it uh, stemmed out from the work on, on Brussels, but then I prolonged, let's say, and um, probably also reopened a little bit this, uh, this, this concept. So this uh, trilogy of concepts, so porous city, isotropic territories, and horizontal metropolis, they propose three big, let's say, conceptual, uh, or let's say figures, or rhetoric figures, no? But the, the porosity is, uh, is about our the body relations, in, because uh, porosity is uh, something fluid that is uh, percolating through a mass, no? So th th there is this uh, con contact between uh, the fluid element and the mass. So there is really a friction no? you pass through. And, and this is, is a concept that, that is very interesting because you can speak at the same time of the physical permeability of the city, the connectivity of the city, but you can also speak or in, in a more uh, metaphoric way or also social uh, way of uh, relations among people, among different groups, uh, 
in inside the, the space of the city. The space of the city acts as a as a sponge or as a stone. It depends. No? In some cases, it's just a stone. You cannot go through. Today, I was showing to some students the, the um, representation we did of the space of Lucifer in a great Paris. So that was related to this kind of a narrative in which uh, Lucifer came one night to ask us to construct the map of uh, uh, its properties in Great Paris. Okay. So we, we make this map, but and we made a collage together with the students. The EMU. And, and Lucifer is what, sorry? Lucifer is uh, the angel that- uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. From the sky <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and finally he's in the- <laughs> It's not the devil, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's say. <laughs> So Lucifer came one night, uh, and uh, because we were there, I was thinking about the Great Paris. How can we make? Uh, how can we understand the Great Paris? And then he came, or uh, he is not a he because it is an angel. So it came, and it, uh, it um, asked us, "Can you please make the map of my properties here in this Great Paris?" So then we we thought about what are the properties of Lucifer in Great Paris. And of course, uh, we understood very easily that uh, the properties of Lucifer are those spaces you don't like to have close to your house, to your home. Is uh, what is disturbing you, what is annoying you, what is fragmenting the space, what makes things impossible to cross. But not only, not only physical, or let's say physical spaces, but also imaginaries. So where the, the frontier is made because you think that there, there are people you don't want mm -hmm. to see. Where the wall is not a true wall, but it's an imaginary wall, but nevertheless, it acts as a wall. So then we added not just uh, the bigger, the, the highways uh, that are mm, f segmenting the Great Paris, but uh, also the big airports, um, the railways, uh, uh, the polluted areas, the industrial areas, industrial and polluted areas, but also the cité, also the Grand Ensemble, because the Grand Ensemble, they are like stones in the Great Paris. And unless you live inside, you are not entering there. So they, they are like walls around them. I mean, this, this can be uh, made very, very long, but in fact, uh, I think that uh, uh, this uh, working on this imaginary and uh, um, say merging this also with, with the with the physics with the, 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 the how rigid space can uh, can be also physically so physically and uh, in relation to the social imagery uh, for example produced uh, these two one collage and one map that was then put close to the the map of the rich and of the poor where you could see that there was a clear correlation between the space of Lucifer and where the poorest of the metropolis live, because there is this correlation or even this relation. So porosity was the occasion to think about all these kinds of things and to, to, to work on uh, strategies, five strategies, five strategies that were also very much in connection to the ecological transition, because we were thinking to uh, drastic uh, reduction, for example, of the consumption of a radical recycle. I think uh, that uh, it has probably been one of the first occasion which in a, in a document, I mean, a document is, was not a plan, but it was a vision. It was clearly said 100% recycle. So as a kind of future in which the reuse is the 100% of the operations, so there is not, not so more than that. Uh, and also about the energy reduction. So there was a long, long work on, on some, with a specialist, uh, energy expert, etc. So that was porosity. At the same time, uh, speaking of ecological, social, and also spatial, physical uh, porosity. A porous city is a city where you can flow through, where it's not transparent. We have to be careful that the porous city is not the city of the modern. Uh, it's not a modern city with the infinite space, a pilot, a ground that it is 100% completely open. No, 
porosity always consider that there are some resistances, no? but, but that nevertheless you pass uh, and each time you, you have to negotiate maybe right? how you pass from one point to another, from one part of the city to another part inhabited by different people. But porosity is a, is a fundamental concept that we, we brought from uh, Benjamin uh, writing about Naples as a porous city. The second isotropy, uh, isotropy is the uh, same conditions in all directions. So you have to imagine space, uh, the urban space where in all parts of the city, you can access to the same uh, quality of life. So that's in, uh, in short, uh, the idea of, the, of isotropic territories. Why these isotropic territories? Because uh, this, uh, this concept is um, very much related to the explorations we did in the diffuse city, different type of diffuse uh, extended urbanization, where in fact, uh, what, what makes this type of urbanization work uh, in the best case, let's say, is uh, this uh, isotropic distribution so that you can live everywhere, but you are not the periphery. You're not the periphery of anything. Mm -hmm. You are just uh, put in the same conditions as the, the rest. Of course, uh, uh, th there can be a, a bad interpretation of the isotropic territories as a kind of, again, uh, infinite expansion. This is not the point. The point is the, the urban territories uh, are inhabited and the condition of inhabitability should be the same everywhere. <laughs> it's very simple. This doesn't mean that everywhere you find a museum, you find a, a station uh, of, of a TGV. No, it's not this is the point. But uh, th there must be a careful understanding of, uh, of, of, the, of using space to bring the same conditions everywhere. And uh, this is a project, for example, that has been known also under terms uh, of uh, uh, decentralization, for example, uh, where, for example, it has been decided at a certain moment in France, in Switzerland, not to bring facilities, to bring... Uh, uh, also outside of the main core of the main center, but at the same time, not so much has been done. If I go back to an old conflict that now seems very old because we, have, we, have, we had the COVID, but the Gilets Jaunes huh, was in fact uh, uh, this type of idea. So uh, the protest was related to the fact that the conditions that were not in fact conditions uh, acceptable to have work, to have the possibility to work in, your territory and not to be obliged to commute uh, for 100 kilometers or uh, say 50 kilometers to go and to come back 100 every day. And, and that in fact, uh, there was a kind of abandonment of territories that is still a fundamental problem, not only in the world, but also in Europe where we think to be, and we are in fact richer uh, you know, with, the, with, the, with more possibilities, but even in Europe, there are so many uh, interior peripheries. That is amazing. There are so very large part of Europe that are peripheries, or as I call them in some exercise made also in, in other continent, servant territories, territories that are just serving the other. And, and this is where the metabolic aspect could be an interesting entry to, to, to revise, for example, this dependency uh, of, uh, of territories. So this is isotropic territories. And the third one, the horizontal metropolis, is uh, probably the most uh, political one because uh, horizontal refer to uh, horizontality, so refer to, to an idea in which there are no, there is no hierarchy, there is no different differences in hierarchy. Uh, relations are um, horizontal, um, say, a distribution of power that uh, gives uh, all the different uh, part, in that case of, of the metropolis, um, the same uh, rights, the same uh, um, the, the same presence around uh, this imaginary table of, of, of decision. And um, a horizontal metropolis uh, um, assume also the contemporary part of the city. So this very wide and strange and chaotic and not clear. So 
as a, as a, as a part where you can improve, sp especially working on space, uh, horizontal relations among the different parts. You can work on mobility, you can work uh, again on facilities, you can, uh, uh, you can work also on, on organization of production that can be coherent to, 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 to that idea of having a horizontal metropolis. And um, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very difficult uh, um, concept in, in the sense that, uh, again, there is the risk of banalization. Okay, now you, you want to save uh, the, the disaster that was produced in the last uh, 60 years. No, I, it's not that I want to say, but I think that uh, also from the previous arguments about energy, embodied energy, etc., that is fundamental that we take care of that part uh, of the of, of the city or of the extended city. Um, but uh, it is also not just uh, taking care of that existing uh, part of the city, but is really uh, imagining that there are consequences in uh, the governance of, of those territories and in, in the way in which choices and investment are, uh, are, uh, are made. Um, and I think it, this is a little bit um, difficult in the sense that uh, many, many occasions uh, by bringing this uh, hypothesis, I, I really understood and felt a kind of fear <laughs> to be a little bit scared of this idea of horizontal metropolis as uh, something that is englobing or that eventually is uh, flattening existing privileges, for example. No? So um, these are three uh, concepts could be, could are three uh, tools, I think, uh, among others, to, um, to reframe the project uh, of the future. I, I want perhaps to conclude some elements with you as you have seen the evolution, you said also as to what cities uh, the, the ambition of cities uh, into reducing their their impact and to uh, reframing the questions. Do I guess uh, from Paris, uh, which was already 15 years ago, or something like that, the, the Grand Paris to to today, do, do you feel that the the cities themselves, as administrations, are 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 considering themselves as subjects, as as people that need as responsible subjects and, and actors that, uh, that are here to, to change something or how mm -hmm. do they position themselves? No, no, I, I think that the, you're, you're speaking now of the, uh, of the administration and mm -hmm. the political level uh, of cities. Um, yes, of course. And uh, again, if I speak of laboratories of the transition is because uh, I, I propose to, to the cities with uh, which we, we, are, uh, we are working that uh, after you make a, a plan guide or say guide plan or you make a master plan or you make a vision, et cetera, something should, uh, should continue in the sense that you have to imagine that from that you have to restructure mm -hmm. the way in which uh, people are working, for example, the different sectors, uh, very simply, mobility with uh, ecology, with uh, the housing, they should work in a different way together, for example, not, not separated, that uh, any single occasion when you have to remake a piece of the road, no? This is something really the, 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 the normal uh, everyday transformation of the city should be used as an occasion to transform. And cities start to, start to, to, to have uh, very high ambitions. Uh, they have a lot of now of them have a climate plan that are really bringing also this perspective in, in a more clear way because in fact, uh, there are engagements that are, that are taken. Of course, there is, uh, in the case of Europe, which is not uh, still for the moment the case of everywhere, but uh, there is a clear agenda from Europe. So cities are also, in a way, pushed very, very strongly to go in that direction. So I think that cities are all now entering the idea that uh, the transition is a serious uh, moment and that you, you have to, to transform your, uh, your, your practices. Uh, still, this is not easy. It's not easy because uh, there is a problem between uh, not the, the time uh, horizon of, of the politician and the time horizon of the transition. The two things uh, do not uh, really match. And this is problematic because uh, when you touch uh, 
the concrete situations, of course, uh, the conflict uh, immediately are there, uh, starting from the most simple one, for example, the, the one around the car, the position of the car. Uh, nevertheless, for example, now we work in the idea that uh, those curves that are um, showing that in 10 years uh, we will be really lower in terms of the use of the car, we have to take them seriously. It's not just a rhetoric. It's not just an image that you put there. So if you make a project, and we make projects that maybe we need five, seven, 10 years, 15 years to be realized, then we can use those uh, curves as arguments in favor, for example, of the liberation of certain spaces, of certain soils, and so on. So I, I think that uh, taking seriously the transition and, and making kind of good uh, relation between uh, the data uh, mm. elaboration and uh, the design, because uh, again, uh, design uh, is done today, but uh, the time to be implemented is, is long normally. Is, uh, is often too long. So these two things can really work together. And working together, you have the, the space that is really coherent with the, the data, for example, or the position where you want the curve to be. And that's, that's fundamental because this makes very concrete what is the transition. Mm -hmm. You can fix certain uh, goals. You can design uh, coherently to those goal goals. And you can imagine that when you are there, the space is the good space that you are uh, expecting. While today we are making projects or we are realizing projects that are old projects. And uh, the big operations, especially are uh, the big urban projects that uh, although many, many people think that urban projects do not exist anymore, but they, they exist. There are so many big areas that are going to be transformed in the future on which you, you have very big plans that have been discussed for 20 years, they are old. Today they are old, they are outdated. I mean, this is a problem eh? because uh, th they were the, 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 the result of negotiations, eh? but negotiations were around the table, not all the actors were present. Only few actors were present that could really negotiate. So that's a fundamental point where we see the inertia of the city. And they say, our work is not only work of imagination of the future, but it's also a work in which you have to never forget the inertia that is not only in the physical space, but it is also in the previous projects, in the previous uh, discussions, in the images that were used to speak about the city. And you, you work with this inertia and you try to, to move a little bit, to bring some... Uh, <laughs> some shock, let's say, inside this inertia. So I generally finish the podcast with two small questions, which is, what, what are you, what's the, the very exciting project that you're now doing in 2021 until the end of 2021? Is there something that really is very interesting or new or? For me, all projects are <laughs> not Not really all, all but uh, almost, uh, almost all projects. Well, uh, we are working, for example, on a vision for, for a, a small city, but with a, a big imagery. <laughs> so that is small, but bigger because it's uh, very present and saying the collective imagery. We are um, working in a very, um, in, in a very complex and, uh, and also um, some, some way disturbing condition that is to work on top of an, a, a, fun, a very big infrastructural project. So a very big infrastructural project on top of which there will be public spaces, green spaces, etc. This is, is, very, is very heavy for me because I, uh, I recognize that this project is not exactly <laughs> up to date, but it is a project that is strongly socially uh, wanted. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people as big associations of citizens that want to have that project. So again, we go back to the question of sport north. It is between society and ecology. I mean, the balance, uh, you have uh, time to understand exactly where it is. But we are trying to make of this project something interesting, eventually innovative, uh, considering that we are really working on this new nature that is uh, 
is the, will be the result also of uh, and the new social space at the same time. And um, what, what else? Uh, I, I have a book. I have a book. I'm, ah, I'm working great. on a book that is uh, almost concluded, but uh, again, I mean, it's not easy to, to enter. Uh, and uh, this book I want, in fact, to deal with uh, what I think is, uh, is my fundamental hypothesis uh, to, to work on. That is that uh, the transition uh, is uh, a new biopolitical project. So the transition, the ecological and social transition brings, we will bring us inside uh, new relations between life and power. That I think is becoming more and more evident. And at the beginning, when I was starting to think about it, it was more the same in the, the fog, but more and more, I think that's it's becoming clear, crystal clear. So this change, of course, I, we can always remember that the modern city was inside a different biopolitical project. And I think that today we are entering. And my, my, my question is always space. What space has to do with that? What space can contribute to that? So I think that this is for me the, the most intriguing and important point for the moment. <laughs> and, and the last question, and perhaps this can be linked to what you're writing. Do you have any inspiring books or, or you know, films or articles that uh, are inspiring to navigate through this biopolitical uh, Exploration uh, but, space. But, but, yes, about the biopolitical uh, space, uh, for sure, of course, uh, Michel Foucault. Um, I, I think that uh, Foucault also writes such man magnificently that uh, you can say everything you can read is fantastic. But I'm quite attached to one book that is uh, the one, Il faut défendre la société. I think that uh, is a very important uh, work by Foucault, but uh, maybe I, I would suggest something a little bit, let's say, Less lighter, heavy. lighter, <laughs> lighter. Uh, that is um, uh, a fantastic utopia on, of the 70s, and uh, its title is uh, Ecotopia. And I think uh, this book is quite extraordinary because uh, you understand that uh, 50 years ago, because it was published, I think, in 75 or 76, uh, it was already very clear what were the challenges. <laughs> And they are there, they are mentioned, there, there are strategies that are very similar to what we are doing today. So I think it's, it's really a very interesting book. Great, thanks so much again for all of your time, Paola. Thank you for your, your passions. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone as well to listening until the end and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.